Do not use default settings. Are you gonna put this on Blackboard after? Or? Um, you can video it. If you ah, want cool. To. Thanks. I'll, I'll post my YouTube site. And yeah. You, guys you can, can totally it. video it. That's cool. So do not use the default settings ever in any program. That's the number one thing. So if it's Myriad Pro 12 point, I know you set that in Illustrator and just left it. Please do not rely on the default settings. Do not rely if you're bringing type over from Microsoft Word. Please, dear God, change the default settings. I Get rid of all the Microsoft Word formatting and change it. I realize that as a designer, you will get stuff sent to you in Word. Change and remove those settings. You need to spend more time on your typography. The other thing is that, let's say, I misspell a word here. Illustrator has spell check. It is under edit check spelling right there. Edit check spelling. So I can check the spelling in my document. Start. Oh no. There we go. That's not hard to do. I can check the spelling. Please check your spelling. There's, there's no excuse to have misspelled words in any of your projects. I saw that it had happened in some of the projects out there in the case where the word opioid was misspelled. That was <laughs> for the op opioid addiction posters use for a, a different class. Use it as a noun or a verb? Uh, it was spelled opoid or opod, something like that. Opiod. Opiod, that was it. It was misspelled. The Fren and, it's French pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> so run spell check. Have somebody else look at your stuff. Don't turn stuff into me with spelling errors that just it's a silly mistake it once you get into a professional realm that's if you're submitting things to your art director your supervisor and you're turning them in with spelling errors that you should have caught they're gonna at the very least sit you down and give you a nice talking to which is never fun so <laughs> do, it does not fun nobody likes to have that like why are you doing this why are you wasting my time with stuff you should catch if it's one of those things that can continue to happen, you can get write-ups. If you sent something to production that had a spelling error in it, you can lose your job. Nobody wants to lose their job over a spelling error. Even if you're like, but somebody else gave me the copy. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Make sure you check the spelling. That's, it's a silly thing, and it, it just bears repeating. The other thing is, please, dear God, do not use fonts like Comic Sans or Papyrus. Or Marker Felt. What's the Ryan Gosling meme where he's like talking about um what is it? Uh, it's Papyrus. It's Papyrus. Okay. The, in the uh, Avatar. Okay. Movie. Yeah. Not Marker Felt. Not Lucida Calligraphy. These are all default system fonts. Do not use Zapfino. <laughs> I know you did it to get under my skin, but it's just, and these are all fonts that, yes, they're on your, I realize they're right there. Oh, they're so easy to use. And you'll see companies use these all the time. That doesn't make them good. Is that like an economic decision? It's easier to print the, like, the default is to print the fancy ones, or like? People don't want to pay for fonts, and they're not, they may not know how to install fonts onto ah, their machine. Got it. Lucida Calligraphy. Is it on this machine? <laughs> Why not even be on here? Maybe I've got one that's... I see it often enough. It's right up there with Apple Chancery as well. Get that one because it might not be on this machine. Zapfino sure is. The reason I understand people are limited on the script fonts they may have, Zapfino has major ascenders and descenders and that crash like crazy. Um, Marker felt, this is not, unless you're doing something for a three year old, just no. <laughs> Same with Comic Sans. Um, you know, if you're doing your four, five-year-old niece's lemonade stand and making a sign, okay, Comic Sans might be appropriate for that, or Marker Felt might be okay for 
your niece's lemonade stand, it is not okay on any project for that you're gonna do in school and generally not for client work either. Papyrus is always a bad choice. Again, major A senders and D senders and it's just getting kind of eaten away in rusty, nasty looking fonts. This is gross looking. It's very wide. Um, it's Apple Chancery. There it is. Apple Chancery is also a really bad choice. Chancery, also a bad choice. Just because this is a very defaulty looking font, it's got pretty yucky uh, terminals on it. Look for better fonts. There's better fonts out there. There's better things you can use than these types of fonts. There's better script. There's better juvenile fonts. There's a better distressed typeface if that's what you're looking for. Just know. Uh, other things, do not use a stroke on your type. People will just say to me, oh, you just don't like that. No, it's not that I don't like that. The problem is, is you can, here, let me blow papyrus up really big so you can see it. The problem is, is that when you start putting a stroke on type, it starts to get rid of that readability. It makes it harder and harder to read. So you can see I've got my red type. That's easier to read. Once I start putting that stroke in, it's going to start kind of inching into your actual words. Just That's just terrible. It's awful. So if you're like, well, it's not reading if I don't put a stroke on it, you need to change the color. You need to change the fonts. You need to change it to something that will hold without a stroke. That's you're going to have very few instances where stroke on type is okay. It's not the hard and fast rule, but in general, don't do it. Particularly on logos. You'll see logos out in the world where they do that. And you can tell them as a designer, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. <laughs> if it's not holding, I, I had somebody in my other class turn into me. Their logo was done in Comic Sans. I, don't, I can't make it up. It happened in like a light yellow with a black stroke. That was their logo typeface. Happened. I was like, what happened? What? It's, I, I mean, it's, it's very juvenile. So again, five-year-old niece's lemonade stand. O okay, maybe. <laughs> but if you're saying, I want to do spud nut donuts, That's just, that's a terrible logo right there. That's, that just says I didn't try and I, I haven't done a lot of design work. That looks like something your Aunt Julie put together. So that's a no. I saw a lot of people turning in type with a stroke on it. The other thing is be very, very careful with effects. So if you said, hey, I'm gonna throw a nice drop shadow on this. Not that drop shadows are the worst thing known to mankind, but if you start putting on Default effects. Again, this is extremely hard to read. Is it adding to it? Was there a reason why you did it or you just put an effect on it? Um, please use effects with judiciously where it's like, okay, I had to use it because it was, you know, not, well, it wasn't reading quite right, so I just threw drop. I think drop shadows look cool. I've had clients tell me they think drop shadows look cool and you're just kind of like, hmm, okay, it's nice. And again, do not use the default settings. So I just ran the default drop shadow on this lovely papyrus type there. It's pretty nasty. It's not a nice shadow. It's a very thick, black, heavy shadow and it doesn't look good. All right, so conversely, what are your top five fonts for corporate folks who have no sense of creativity? For corporate folks that have no sense of creativity, drop it in Helvetica. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> drop it in Helvetica, put a little tracking on it. Awesome. It's, that's as vanilla as you can possibly get. It's, it's a delightful, I mean, it's, it is very corporate. It's very uniform. It's very neutral. That's my number one as far as like, and there are certain fonts that are always nice and beautiful. I mean, you've, Think about what the type is saying to you. 
there's almost like the market in town. It's kind of like it's basically corporate based. I mean, you have a small pockets of like creative spots. It seems like the majority is corporate, so that's your major economic base of sort of figure out what make the most sense to cater to. Yeah, I mean, it's there's nice, nicely designed typefaces out there. If a typeface costs three hundred bucks, generally they spend a lot of time, and there's a lot of development behind that font that doesn't mean those are the only fonts you can use but they're more professional level fonts than some of the ones you're going to find on Defont um, because they're costly they're from professional type foundries the other thing is um, so when I said one color logo let's pretend this papyrus is my logo this is three colors because I have the black I have the green I have the red one color is not Oh, I'll just make this gray and leave the red stroke on there. That's two colors now because I'm printing black and printing red. One color is one color. Black still counts as a color because you still have to print black ink. And a lot of people turn in two color logos on their one color logo and I was like, it's black and it's blue, so that's two colors because you would print black and blue. If you think you're running in one spot color, it has to be one flat color. So, and that one color is not the same as your black and white. Black and white is black. Everything in that logo is black. Versus a one color would be, maybe I'm going to use a Pantone 146. Great, that's my one color logo. So it should be from your corporate color palette. It should be just one color. Are corporate color palettes done in the direction of cost savings more than anything? Uh, cost savings because if they are purchasing, if they have a spot color, they can actually um, buy that color in bulk and do, if, if they have their own dedicated printers, they can always have that color ready to go and that makes it cheaper. It's also to control what the designers are using. So if we just said red, Red's our corporate color. Well, <laughs> 50 shades of red, right? There's uh, 5,000 shades okay, of red. Right. What color are you using? It's also to make sure that your stuff matches. Um, you know, if you walk into, if you walk into Michael's a clothing designer, you'll have your color palettes for your lines. These are the colors we're using this year, this line, because then everything coordinates with itself. If you walk into any retail environment and you look, all the products are coordinating where you can mix and match and it's going to go together because they've limited that color palette and it's like, oh, I can buy this and I can buy this and they go together, they match um, because those are the colors they have defined in, in their strategy manual that says, here's what we're doing for this particular product run. So it all looks nice and cohesive in a retail environment. It's understandable for you as a consumer to have it also builds that brand you know tide is going to be in that orange bottle you don't have to think about it when you're walking down the aisle you see all the orange you're going to grab a thing at tide or like that that's one, their corporate um, color what's the name of that company they're called um yellow and it's like no they're called yellow and their color is orange oh yeah it's a truck the shipping company i've used yeah, them like, before it's yeah it's like a bunch a of it's a, orange yeah it's yeah. I've, I've shipped stuff with them actually um yeah, like, it's, a, it's a they ship you know freight it's a mm -hmm. trucking company okay dhl no, 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 it's, no, it's a dedicated... Yellow. I've never... It's called yellow. Yeah, it's orange. It's, it's like a construction orange, orange yeah. Huh, that's weird. No, I've actually been on to one of the terminals where they unload it. It's, it's like fleets of trucks that say yellow and black text, but in the background is orange. Hmm. That's a poor design decision. Yeah, but yeah. that's um, like an example, like they have their yeah. little... Yeah, every, you know, any solid brand is going to have it. So if you think UPS, even I hate that tagline, see what Brown can do for you. I think it's that's terrible. UPS. That's that's one of their taglines. I've it's, never heard of it before. Like they don't but you recog it. you'll hear it in a commercial. Um, and maybe they've hopefully changed it since then because I thought it was terrible. But that's at UPS Brown. They're brown and gold. You know the UPS truck, even if you can't read UPS, you know it's a UPS truck because of that color brown. That's why they have those corporate colors is so that, you know, if I send a design, I'm working at a, you know, HQ and I'm sending something out to Pete who's freelancing for me, he knows what colors to make it. He's not guessing what brown I'm using for UPS. He knows. It's the same brown that we always use. So it's having that control 
you have 50 designers working for you, everything looks the same. So that's the colors. Like their branding. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's that's that solid branding. So there's no guessing on, you know, does this red match from ad to ad? Of course it does. It's part of our corporate palette. Um, like FedEx has like three, the, the orange and the blue, and that's about it, right? I think it's just orange, blue, and white. Okay, yeah. Um, so I think that's all they have, and that's what they use over and over and over. So it's recognizable. So that's why they have those colors. Um, other things with type. So if you're setting type on an image, there's my nice image here. Don't put the type wherever I can't read it. I can't read that there. That's not very good. It's not, let me lock that there. Type should not be just randomly placed somewhere on your ad. If I have multiple lines of type, they shouldn't just be kind of here, there, and everywhere. Use a grid. Always use a grid. That's not, it's not a negotiable thing. I have a lot of students who are like, why do I have to use a grid? I don't like using a grid. Well, it's a lot harder to kind of eyeball and be like, this feels right. If you start laying down a grid when you start your project, it's going to answer a lot of the questions for you. It's going to speed up your design work. People, I mean, time is money. So I know you students, you're like, well, I've got two weeks to do this project. Well, in the real corporate world, you have about an hour to do this project. So if there's anything you can do to speed that up, do it. Actually, I have a plug that's called Guide Guide, where actually it'll like, it'll give you what? control of the parameters, it's like a $10 plugin. And um, it'll, if you hit like three, three rows or whatever, it'll like divide your space and do it. You don't have to do the math. Yeah, there's, there's default guides you can set on there. Just any guides, any grid that you can put on is going to make, it's immediately going to make it better. It's going to make it faster. It's going to make it easier. Uh, if your type is not reading against a photo, you need to fix that in a way that it will read. So if I said this doesn't read, well maybe I need to change and fix it in a way that doesn't involve using three effects and a stroke. That's bad. <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, do adjust the image. If I need to go into Photoshop and remove some of these clouds to make a more flat blue background to put my type on, do it. Most photos are manipulated in a way that they have a negative space for a type to sit. This photo by default has a nice negative space right here that I could set on my type. I'm not going to set the type right on the mountain. Probably right there. It's nice. It's light blue. It's not dark. It's perfect. But I may need to adjust it. So you can edit those photos. You don't have to just leave it the way you found it. How can you adjust your photo so the type reads? That's a better way to do it than just be like, oh, I threw a red stroke on all the type. Done. Kind of placed it wherever. Um, one last thing is, and this is more into a professional level, but I want to make you aware of it. So if I'm looking at color mixing, let's say I want this yellow type. So that's kind of a really gross color. Let me put it on like a 2% black here, 18.63. Um, so in, I know you can't read that at all. I wish I could make my palette bigger. So the color mix I just did for this yellow, 17.45 cyan, magenta is 18.63, yellow is 100% and black is two. Now a problem with that is when you're printing it professionally, it has to go through those on a CMYK press. It's going through the press four times. Every time type goes through, there's a chance of misalignment because that paper's getting printed on four times because there's a roller for cyan, magenta, yellow, black. So it's getting four impressions. So um, with type, if it's a four color mix, it's gonna be blurry because there's just no way that that four times it's gonna hit dead on every single time. So it's something like if I've got type and it's thin and it's small, if it's blurry, it's gonna just make it a little fuzzy and not so sharp. Type should always be three colors. What did you say without compression? Like, is there a way you can say without compression? Or you, no, no, point? no. It's it, it's when this. It's not a compression issue. It's okay. not a file compression issue. It's a color mixing issue. All right. 
it's because it's going to on that screen it's going to have this percentage of that color okay so because they make the plates for it in a four color press oh, okay that's because it's like it's um it's it's like not digital it's like real stuff it's yeah it, okay. it's they make a plate they okay. etch a plate and it runs through on a commercial printing gotcha. press so it's gonna get four colors applied to it okay. is there any reason i need two percent of black nope sure don't the other thing is you always want to make sure your color mixes are not sitting at 17.45 and 18.63 that generally means somebody took an eyedropper and sampled a color out of a photo go in and fix your colors so it's like 18 by 18. There we go. That's a more professional mix. So I can tell somebody this is 18 cyan, 18 magenta, 100% yellow. They can mix that color. That's a professional color that will print more correctly. And it's even better if I can get two colors. Three is the max you can do for type. So if I set that to zero, that's a much better yellow. So. Eight, now I can say this yellow is going to print on a professional press 18 0 100 0 that's going to print clean and lovely even if it's this disgusting looking type <laughs> one last thing with type is always make sure when I'm setting my point size is to set it at a normal point size if you're just clicking and dragging and making it bigger and it's sitting at 38.6 point size that's not a correct point size to make your stuff. In your corporate style guides, if you're fully flushing this out, you're going to say, okay, anytime I'm using body copy, it's this size. It's, you know, it's 14 point with 18 point letting, so many points of track. It, it should be always a round size. If you want to get very technical, you can go with some of the ones that are deep. These are default sizes because they were from the day leftover times of when everything was metal, but they're also going with um, pica sizes, points and picas. So 72 is one inch. So just make sure that's always, a, it's not 38.6. I'm going to make it 39. Actually, I'm going to make it 40 point because I know that's a, an easy way to communicate. That's a better way to print it as digital presses work, but that's still a more professional way to send out your typography. Anytime I look at files and I see really weird color mixes, I see really weird font sizes, I see really weird decisions like that, I'm like, they weren't paying attention. They were just kind of going, ah, that looks good. How do I know that if I'm wanting to make this spud nuts the same across a lot of things, Oh, it's 38.62 points. No, make it 40. Then I can remember. Then I can set that up, and that's a professional way to do it. So make sure that you're doing that when you're setting and deciding some of those things. It's going to make your design work a lot easier as you're applying your branding. I say, okay, my logo, it's going to be set this big. It's going to be set at 40 points. Awesome. I know that's going to be how I set it up for every ad I do. That's the size I want it. You know, my body copy is always going to be set at this point size in any printed publication or on the web. It's going to be this size. That way it's consistent. Yes? Makes sense? Yeah. Please, dear God, don't use... I had somebody, not this class, but I had somebody just turn something in where it was all set in papyrus and I just, I died a little inside. <laughs> <laughs> little, little bit inside. Um... <laughs> So he'd sent it to another teacher and they wrote back the same thing, like, why is this set in papyrus? And still turned it in. So just remove those fonts. Don't use them. They're all bad. I see people use Apple Chancery all the time where it's like, I want an italic-ish font. <sighs> it's not a very good one. Oh, the other one, Noteworthy. If I never see Noteworthy again, Handwriting Dakota is also a really bad one. I'm not sure if that's a uh, noteworthy. There it is. Just again, it's for little kids. All right. So, what are your top five professional fonts for um, everyday use? 
top five professional fonts. I like Helvetica New and Jill Sands. <laughs> okay. Jill Sands, Gil Sands Light and yep. Helvetica New. I and like um, those. That's my favorite too. Um, I like Garamond for a serif. Um, Caslon is an also, also a nice serif, Adobe Caslon. Helvetica Gil Sands Avenir is a really nice one to use as well. Um, so, other things that are very nice to use. Um, mm -mm -mm. George is nice. Century Gothic, yeah, that was the one I was trying to think of. I was like, Century Gothic is a nice one. Kazan's good. Um, Bodoni's all right. Dido is all right. The Futura's all right. You just got to be careful with those because Futura is very, very round. Because um, that's the whole idea is it's very round. Optima's all right. Palatino's all right. That's a little fancier. Um, all those are bad. I don't totally hate times. However, it just looks very defaulty. Verdana as well looks very defaulty. It's not that it's a bad font. It just looks like it because it's set to a default like Times New Roman Times isn't a bad mm -hmm. font. It's just because it's set to a, a default okay. that may unless you're doing something special with it you've got to communicate to me that you just were like whatever it's Times. It's same with Myriad Pro. Myriad Pro isn't a terrible font however if you're just setting Myriad Pro at a 12 point and you're not adjusting anything about it it looks very defaulty. It, it doesn't have the Chicago Tribune use like Arial or something. Or they uh, might. Um, and if you're gonna go that route, if you're on a Mac, use a Helvetica over an Arial. Arial okay. is a ripoff of Helvetica okay. because Microsoft didn't want to pay for the rights for Helvetica, so okay. they developed Arial as the default ah. on a PC. Okay. That's where it came from. Cool. Um, I had no idea. So yeah, yeah handwriting. They must have taken that off as a, his handwriting Dakota used to be a, a default on here and it's also terrible. Okay, it looks like maybe that's not here anymore. So, noteworthy. Blech. Again, it's very juvenile. So, Thank you. you're Thank welcome. You.